So before moving to row decoders, we need to discuss one more thing about columns, and that's specifically drivers. Now, column decoders need to work as multiplexers, but they also need to work as demultiplexers, especially in RAM arrays, because sometimes in RAM arrays, we want to write to a specific cell. And so think of this column, and this column in a uh, an SRAM will be a pair of bit lines, but in a DRAM will be a single bit line. And we want to write through this column. We want to write something uh, uh, through this column. And so that something comes from an external bus. Uh, in RAMs, there's usually something uh, called a data in bus and a data out bus. So we have separate buses for reading and writing, and each of them is going to be the same size because the cell, uh, the unit of storage is the same size. But on the other hand, uh, within the array, we only have a single bit line through which we have to read and write. This is true for one transistor DRAMs, and it's also true for SRAMs. It might be, not be true for uh, three transistor DRAMs, but these are not very common. So what we need to do is we need uh, to multiplex these two uh, buses, and uh, internally, they have to be a single bus. So in fact, uh, the uh, multiplexer during reading, the column multiplexer, is being fed data this way. And it's being fed data from some driver uh, up the bit line. This driver, if you think in very simple terms, is going to be the cell. But we know that it's not going to be the cell. It's going to be the sense amplifier. So the sense amplifier is possibly feeding the bit line, the column decoder, uh, this value when we are reading. Um, on the other hand, when we are writing, we have to feed data the other way around. So during writing, data is coming from the outside and it has to be driven to the bit line. So it has to be routed to a specific bit line. And we can do this by using the multiplexer exactly the same way, just with the, the only difference being that data is being fed from the outside instead of being fed to the outside. So all the difference is in the direction of, of the data being fed. But now there are a couple of issues here. One of them is that the bit line now uh, could be written to or read from. So it could be contention. So we have to take care of this. Uh, and the other thing is, while we are writing to the memory array, we have to drive the, the values. Uh, the demultiplexer or the multiplexer is a passive circuit. It doesn't have any drive. Uh, it's an RC circuit with a, a potentially terrible uh, time constant, and it doesn't have the ability to drive the large capacitance of the bit line. So first things first, the bit line could be contention because we could be reading from it and writing to it. This can be resolved, although it's not a huge issue because when we are um, writing to the, uh, to the array, we should be driving the value of the bit line. When we are reading, the bit line will be passive. But to guarantee that there's no, uh, that the, the two paths are not actually uh, fighting each other, we have to have uh, tri-state buffers. So there's a tri-state buffer at the output of the sense amplifier and a tri-state buffer at the output of the driver. When we are writing, we go through the driver. When we are reading, reading we go through the sense amplifier. So when we are writing, this tri-state buffer will impose an open circuit on this path. When we are uh, uh, reading, this write state buffer will impose in an open circuit on this path. And therefore, there's no situation where the bit line is being fought over by the driver and the sense amplifier. We are worried about a situation where there is a feedback here between these two very active and very large amplifiers. Because as we will see, uh, the column the driver is actually a very strong amplifier. And the sense amplifier, as we know, is also a strong amplifier. So the bit line should be under the control of either of these paths, but not both at the same time. Now, the second question is, what is this driver and what does it do? So this driver receives the value to be written from the column decoder. And the column decoder, being a, a demultiplexer in this case, is not capable of um, driving the value. And so, so we need the driver to provide low impedance drive for the bit line. We need it to charge up the large capacitance of the bit line real fast. And we have already discussed how this, is, uh, this could be done when we talked about, uh, about uh, logical effort in module 4. 
And so this can be done by using a chain of inverters. This chain of inverters can then uh, optimize the delay of the path uh, through which they are going. And so um, this path has, this is the driver. Uh, we know the input, this is the column driver. We know the input impede, uh, the input capacitance of the first stage in the driver. It's usually gonna be a very small uh, inverter. And we also know the final capacitance that it is driving. And that final capacitance is gonna be the total capacitance of the bit line. So this is the total bit line capacitance, not the bit line capacitance per cell. This is the total bit line capacitance. We also know the number of stages n in the buffer, in this uh, buffer chain. And this allows us to find the uh, expression of total fan out in the chain or chain total effort. They are e equal to each other in an inverter chain because every stage has a logical effort of one. So that's gonna be CBL, which is the output capacitance, divided by the input capacitance of the buffer chain, which is CGN1 plus CGP1. This allows us to find the optimal uh, total effort of every stage, which is the optimal electrical effort and optimal fan out. And it's gonna be the nth root of F capital. And we can find the total delay of the buffer driving the bit line, and it's going to be TP0 into 1 plus nth root of uh, F divided by gamma. This is the uh, delay of one stage, and uh, the delay of the whole chain is going to be that multiplied by n. Now, if we take the uh, delay of a single stage, which is uh, TP0 into 1 plus nth root of F divided by gamma, there's a question we can ask that we didn't ask before, which is, what's the uh, optimal number of stages to use? What's the optimal n? And we can find that by differentiating this expression. Now, this expression is the expression of a single stage delay. But if you optimize a stage delay, you can optimize the chain delay because in an inverted chain, every stage has equal delay because every stage has equal uh, electrical effort. And so if we differentiate this with respect to n, which is something we haven't done before because we haven't actually thought about the number of stages. We always thought of it as a given. But in this case, we can actually um, decide what optimal number of stages we have to use. So we differentiate this and um, equate it to zero. And this is going to give us a, a value of gamma plus nth root of f uh, minus 1 over n nth root of f len f. And if we equate this to zero, this is going to give us the n that gives us the uh, optimal value. Now, the presence of gamma doesn't allow us to find an, an analytical solution for, for uh, this optimal n, but if gamma is equal to, um, uh, to zero, uh, then we find that the optimal n and optimal is equal to len f. And so the optimal number of uh, stages to use in the buffer is going to be equal to the uh, natural logarithm of the total electrical effort of the chain. Now, gamma is equal to zero means basically drain capacitance is equal to zero, which means that there's no self-loading in the entire chain, which is not realistic. Uh, so gamma is normally more equal to, uh, closer to one than it is to zero, because drain capacitance is uh, usually um, closer to uh, gate capacitance rather than null. In this case, uh, with gamma equal to 1, we have to solve this equation uh, iteratively, numerically, to find the optimal value of n. Now, there's one more complication here, which is that we are assuming that we are driving a, uh, a bit line, which is a lumped capacitor. In many cases, the bit line is not actually a lumped capacitor, but is in fact a, uh, an RC circuit. In module 13, we will discuss in detail how to deal with RC circuits, with RC uh, wires, uh, that is wires that have a significant resistance. And the main way to do this, one you know, very practical way to do it, is to calculate the total wire resistance, R wire, and uh, view the wire as a single pi section, where half of its total capacitance is at the beginning and half of it is at the end. First, we have to discuss why wires are sometimes uh, resistive like this. And second, we have to discuss what effect, if any, this has on uh, the delay. So um, 
The reason that many wires are resistive is that sometimes the wires are not even made of metal. And so the bit line was made of metal in uh, ROMs, NVMs, and SRAMs. But as we saw with DRAMs, particularly one transistor DRAMs, the bit line is actually made of uh, the diffusion layer. Uh, this was done in the interest of density, but also to allow uh, the polysilicon layer and the metal layer to be used to do other stuff. So the metal layer was used for the word line and polysilicon was used to create uh, capacitor plates for the storage capacitors. So diffusion wires are extremely resistive. And so it's, it's extremely unrealistic to uh, model a uh, bit line in a DRAM using a lumped capacitor model. Uh, but also in other arrays which use metal wires, modeling the wire as a lumped capacitor is an extreme approximation, especially in modern technologies. The problem is uh, there's something called skin effect. And skin effect is a high frequency effect where wires that are uh, otherwise um, highly conductive, meaning that they have very low resistance, start to have an appreciable resistance when operated at high frequency. This is definitely true for memories. Memories are always operated as fast as they can be oper operated. And therefore, even metal wires in modern technologies that operate at high frequency are going to be somehow resistive. And so you cannot, you cannot ignore the effect of the wire resistance R wire. Again, we're going to represent the uh, resistive bit line uh, using a single pi section, uh, including wire resistance and wire capacitance. And let's just think of how this impacts uh, our decisions on when uh, optimizing the delay of the chain. So if you go back in module four and look at how we uh, obtained um, the uh, optimal results, it was by writing the uh, total delay in the chain and then differentiating it with respect to gate capacitance. And therefore, this allowed us to find uh, the optimal stage electrical effort, which turned out to be uh, whenever all stages have equal electrical effort. So we'll do it the same way here. We will write the uh, total delay of the chain. So for every stage from stage zero all the way up to uh, stage n minus two, uh, delay expression is exactly the same as the delay expression uh, when we were deriving um, logical effort for an inverter chain. So there's nothing different here. It's going to be exactly the same because we have the same capacitances. And so that means we have exactly the same delay expression. However, for the last stage, this stage, we have something a little bit odd happening here because we are uh, driving uh, the capacitance of the wire, but not its entire capacitance. We are driving half of the capacitance of the wire. And so uh, the last stage is going to drive uh, 0.69 times Rn minus 1. This is the resistance of this inverter multiplied by uh, the total capacitance that is driving. This is the um, self capacitance or the drain capacitance of stage n minus 1 plus whatever uh, wire delay we are driving here. And then here we are going to assume that it's just driving this, uh, this capacitance for now. But it's actually not driving just this capacitance, it's also driving this capacitance. And so we have to calculate an additional term that, that uh, accommodates the fact that it's driving another capacitance. But this other capacitance is not only being driven through R and minus 1, it's also being driven through the series connection of R wire. And so we have this additional term plus 0.69 R and minus 1 plus R wire um, into C wire divided by 2. So now we ostensibly have to take this expression of delay and differentiate it with respect to CG uh, for any specific stage and equate to zero. Except maybe you don't have to do this because we notice that this is uh, the same as the original problem, which gave us the original solution to optimization. And that the only difference happens to be in the uh, additional two terms caused by the last stage now having to drive um, a, an RC network instead of a lumped capacitor. And so if we expand these terms, we will find that we have 0.69 Rn 
minus 1 into gamma Cn minus 1. And then there's a half C wire coming from here and a half C wire coming from this other term. So this is going to be plus C wire. And then we have plus 0.69 R wire times C wire over 2. Now, if you look at this term, this is exactly the term that we would have seen for the last stage if the last stage was driving a lumped capacitor. And so we can fold this in with this summation and we end up with the same expression as the original optimization problem. And we are left with this additional term. And we have to think about whether this additional term will affect optimization. And the answer is no because this additional term is a constant. It is only a function of wire capacitance and wire resistance. So when you differentiate with respect to the sizes of the stages, it has no effect on the result, meaning that F optimal is still gonna be the nth root of F capital, where F capital is still calculated as C wire, which is CBL in this case, divided by the input impedance, the input capacitance of the first stage. And the only difference that the resistance of the wire has is that it adds an additional um, component to delay, sort of a self-delay for the wire itself, a, a, a parasitic delay from the wire itself. This is not a small addition to delay, and it's not by any means negligible. But all I'm saying is there's nothing you can do about it by optimizing the buffer chain. This is always going to be there.